Hello friends, let us study a very important aspect in food processing industry that is good manufacturing practices which is commonly known as or called as in short GMP. GMP is defined as the procedure which provides the basic environmental conditions and a management system structure for the production of safe foods. Why GMP is needed? It is needed to assist the organization to implement and operate effective management practices to produce and process product as per the specifications and to reduce the risk of contamination. It is very important as far as the safety of the customers are concerned. It is required to maintain manufacturing consistency as well as it is needed or it is important for the image and reputation of the company. In this slide just I have tried to show you that what are the different pillars in GMP process that is overview that is there are four major that is one is the management, management responsibility is there for the GMP, then resources, food processing resources whatever they also should confirm to the GMP, then there should be major measurement analysis and improvement to make sure that the GMP is forcefully applied or implemented and then another aspect is the product realization. Okay. So, in the next slides in the next uh, about 25 to 30 minutes we will uh, take up one by one these issues. So, first of all you know that in the any food processing industry that is it is not only inside the factory, but it deals with that is the raw material that is how the when the raw material is produced there also that is the GMP means it is a total overall holistic approach starting from the primary production of the raw materials, transportation, then storage, then food processing, finally retail etcetera. That is it involves that suppliers, raw materials, packaging material, processing aids, pesticides, fertilizers, cleaning chemicals etcetera. So, good agronomical practices should be followed, good horticultural practices should be followed, good environmental practices must be ensured so as to get the good quality raw material at the processing plant. Okay. So, the role of organization as far as the implementation of the GMP is concerned, it has a very very important role like it should set up a GMP team, then formation of the SOPs that is standard operating procedures and its documentation, a setting up of a quality assurance system for protection, uh, production as well as service, then communication both internal as well as external, proper hygiene and sanitation, proper training of the personnel, periodic evaluation and update and documentation. So, all these comes under the role of, our, of the organizations that is the organizations responsibility includes that is to plan, to document, to implement, to operate, to validate, to maintain, to improve, to update that is the GMP system. So, as to ensure the quality products are produced which are safe for consumption. So, that is the a role as well as the responsibility of the organization is concerned. Regarding GMP and HACCP, HACCP hazard analysis and critical control point, it is a important aspect of GMP. It can be a part of the GMP and is a systematic program to assure food safety. HACCP is designed to be applied to every aspect of food industry as I told you from farm to table including growth, harvest, processing, distribution and sales etcetera. HACCP requires the use of SOPs, uh, may be clearly written instructions, the generation of accurate accountable records for all the process steps and measurements 
as well as the employment of the upper appropriately trained staff. So, this may be part of the HACCP system. A basic GMP program is a prerequisite of HACCP accreditation. HACCP is a vehicle to ensure safety for human consumers and eliminate as much risk as possible from a food processing or food manufacturing perspective. So, there are in the HACCP there are seven steps and these seven steps must be ensured their implementation in the chronological order like first is that depending upon the type of food made that is being produced whatever raw materials that are in the process value chain steps find out that is conduct a hazard analysis that is where are in the process line where are the chances for the hazards or for the deterioration or for the contamination with the health hazard uh, microorganism etcetera. So, conduct a hazard analysis first point second is then determine the CCPs which is that is in the process line which is the critical control point then establish the critical limit establish a system to monitor control of the CCPs and then establish the corrective action to be taken when monitoring indicate that a particular CCP is not in control. Then establish procedure for verification to confirm that the HACCP system is working efficiently or effectively and finally, establish documentation concerning all procedures and records appropriate to these principles and their application. So, these are the same. Then let us uh, discuss about standard operating procedures that is basically it is a fixed methodology. There is a production team should be provided with a SOPs where it should be uh, SOPs with be a clear cut purpose and frequency. So, it is needed to maintain uniformity right. It is a uh, that is just instruction that is our operating manual for the operating personals. It should have clear cut description of the procedures, the, it should be properly documented and it in fact uh, documentation gives the proof of work and also that is it helps in the corrective action. That is whether the, if there is a SOP one can easily find that whether this SOP or standard protocols have been followed or not or if not what is the CAR that is the corrective action request. So, a CAR for each deviation from the SOP that is the CAR. So, whenever there is any CVR state the uh, state the deviation use objective evidence to state the deviation then action plan to prevent deviation reoccurrence that is to make sure that in the future or in such deviations are not occurring then set a deadline verify that the action plan has been effective and finally, review and document. So, this is your uh, corrective action request. Documentation obviously, it is the proof of action taken if it is not documented it means that uh, it did not happen and good documentation practices we are discussing good manufacturing practices similarly good but documentation practices should be followed to maintain the document records should be readily available document must be legible readily identifiable retriable and they should be accurate and consistent with the sop etc and these documents their control is important they are reviewed and controlled prior to implementation updated and reapproved as and when necessary changes and the current revision states of the documents are identified and obsolete documents are prevented from uses that is the document which has become old they should be appropriately removed from. Then very important GMP team in fact, GMP team has to be separate from the manufacturing team. So, and it is a basically a member of multidisciplinary knowledge and experience that it should have the people who have knowledge of all aspects of the production, product manufacturing and packaging and so on. So, 
it uh, gmp team is responsible for the maintenance of the records of the uh, process right in fact uh, their uh, team's knowledge and experience also should be properly recorded the gmp team drafts the policies fulfilling the statutory and regulatory requirements it maintains the integrity of the policy it assesses team members efficiency it conducts proper reviews and submit reports to the top management that gmp is properly being implemented or it is a sop is there is no deviation from the sop is in the production line etc and of course the gmp team uh, maintains proper communication communication with the management communication with the production team communication with the other teams involved in the process so after that the next is the gmp regarding resources resources are very very essential for the implementation of the gmp and the resources include both the human resource as well as infrastructure that is they must strictly adapt hygienic and sanitary sops uh, to attend gmp human resource for example personnel which are appointed in the factory whether in the production team whether in the market team or whether in the gmp team etc they should have proper education they should have adequate training they should have proper ex skill and experience even personnel must be assessed periodically they should have there is awareness they should have proper awareness among the personnel regarding food safety and food usage they should know what is the food safety how the food which is being produced how it will be used what are the different practices being followed during storage transportation handling etc all those things so they must take care and training programs should be routinely organized it should be reviewed updated and documented so the human resources they should be always update they should have the current knowledge about the product about its process then next comes the gmp in infrastructure that is the premises the location of the premises food processing industry should be established away from polluted areas and industrial general non food industrial activities areas subject to floods are prone to infestation by pests should not be used for establishment of food industry that is areas where waste may be solid waste or liquid waste cannot be removed effectively that is if it is not having a proper communication road facility and all those things that area should not be so the location should be a good location easily communicated or easily linked and more importantly that is a nearby surrounding there should be contamination free environment it must help in maintaining that then food industry building design both external as well as internal the external about 45 cm width should surround the exterior of all production and storage buildings as you could see in this picture the trees should be at least 10 m away from the production and storage facility the facilities for disposal of sewerage and waste water should be provided in the building the building materials are walls etc which are there should have proper protection from weather even outside building lighting should be made sure that is it should be yellow sodium lamps or such other lamps that they should not invite insects etc so they should be proper light arrangements then internal building design as a, you could see here that is internal raw material storage processing and product storage they should be separate even the movement of the material from in to out there should be unidirectional that is you can see here in this uh, here the material is uh, coming from this side then it is a uh, moving all right that is the raw material storage raw material from raw material storage it comes that is the even handling and uh, even if the washing and primary processing etc 
and whatever rubbish is created either in the raw material storage or in the primary processing, the rubbish or waste should go out and then the material comes to. Then maybe again that is the in the primary processing as they are cleaning, grading, sorting, etcetera. So, is the waste generated should go out and the material enters in the actual processing room, heating room, packaging room, etcetera. So, from the processing it comes to the packaging room and inside the here near the packaging area that is the even uh, tool area uh, this packaging material etcetera should be stored and then finally, from that uh, material moves to comes to secondary packaging and loading. So, you can see here that is it entered from here and it came uh, follow this uh, route and the packaging the material finally and outside there should be clear cut passage here as you can see. So, that the even truck any uh, truck comes it unloads the material even the same truck can move it can go further load the finished product and go out. So, this way that is even inside interior design surface of walls doors floors they should be smooth easy to clean and they should be impervious. Floors there should be should be free from cracks and open joints there should be adequate drainage for cleaning ceiling and overhead fixtures etcetera should be such that they should be clearly that is easily cleaned cables and pipes should be fixed above ceiling or 40 millimeter away from the surface to enable their cleaning glass windows are should be protected against breakage etcetera right then the food handling facilities there is water to be used it should be portable water as per WHO or guidelines right both for manufacturing as well as hand washing etcetera portable water should be used even non portable water can be used for control of pest control or even steam generation etcetera. However, the lines should be clearly marked that is which is your portable water which one is the non portable water. Personal hygienic facility, hygiene facility, laboratories and changing facilities should be provided with some hot water facility that is at least 40 degree Celsius or more than that. So, that they can hand wash and all those they can do with little lukewarm water. Then natural and mechanical ventilation both facilities should be provided like uh, even uh, air handling units etcetera should be given. So, that the positive pressure development if needed in the processing facility is maintained to control or avoid contamination. Proper ventilation and temperature control mechanism should be give, give, provided in the processing facility. Adequate natural as well as artificial lighting should be provided. Then next part is the equipment GMP equipment there is proper SOPs should be available for every equipment. They should be easy to dismount, they should be made from inert material that is the material of construction of equipment should not react with the food component right. They should uh, be inclined, they should have round edges which are easily accessible for cleaning etcetera as you can see here that is a it is a these are the top these are the good good equipment from the GMP point of view whereas the bottom these two are the bad equipment for the because even they are easy easy to clean easy to remove the material removal etcetera. So, they should be covered or protected to prevent contamination they should be installed at a distance of 60 centimeter from walls and 30 centimeters from the floor this should be cleaned and disinfested after every maintenance all interior surfaces in contact with the product must be self emptying as you can see here the good equipment which you have shown in the top of this picture. And final product handling stations must be fitted with metal detectors of appropriate sensitivity and pest control and prevention that is again very very important aspect that is all holes drains and places etcetera must be sealed there should not be any chance of any pest uh, contamination or pest growing etcetera. Food sources should be kept away from the walls and above the ground doors should have self closing facility and curtains should use of poisons etcetera 
are strictly prohibited in the raw material as well as in the production area. Insecticide and pesticides used should be of low toxicity and should be approved by the regulatory agencies for use in a food factory. Even plant inspection and surveillance programs must be conducted and documented properly. Then GMP cleaning that is important it that is the removing grass debris from the surfaces applying a detergent solution to loosen soil and bacterial film adhering to the piping or to the container surfaces, rinsing the equipment and all pipes etcetera with water, hot water and dry cleaning when necessary disinfection may be alcohol or such other disinfectant uh, with uh, subsequent rinsing should be done and hygienic storage and handling of the clean portable equipment and utensils. So, that is very important cleaning of the equipment, cleaning of the utensils, cleaning of the room surfaces etcetera everything. Then other in general cleaning and sanitation that is procedure and frequency must be documented cleaning products which are used even the cleaning solutions, acid solution, alkali solution, detergents etcetera this should all be grass chemical are those which are recommended for the use in food industry. Label uh, the all the cleaning solutions should be properly labeled and should be kept outside the production area. Litter bins should be covered and fitted with plastic inserts a central rubbish, rubbish collection point preferably outside of the raw material and production building should be provided. Silos must be capable of totally emptied and cleaned adequate prevention and corrective maintenance to facilitate cleaning operations must be done, must be taken care of. Then personal and hygiene both for staff as well as visitors that is people suffering from injuries and illness are uh, should not be allowed in the production or in the factory or they should not be allowed to visit. Hairs, moustache, beards etcetera must be properly covered, uniform must be kept clean and must be replaced uh, frequently whenever necessary. Jewelries, watches, pins, earrings etcetera are not allowed inside the production area or people should not wear these things except for the plain wedding rings and stud earrings. Hand must be properly washed, handling of finished product must be minimized. Even smoking, chewing, sneezing over the unprotected food products are etcetera in the areas in the production area nearby it should not be permitted, it should be uh, not, it should not be allowed. Visitors must adhere to the personal hygiene requirements, smoking and eating areas must be segregated from the storage and production areas. Proper training should be provided to the employees to be cautious regarding the GMP and they must be documented that what are the standard practices for the cleaning, for the personal hygiene etcetera. It should be properly documented so that the and all the staff members should be time from time to time they should be uh, told about the proper ed the educated about this or they should be properly reminded about this personal hygiene. Then comes the product realization. So, the organization shall plan and develop the processes needed to manufacture the product and this is again very important. This involves the characteristics of the raw material that is whether the raw material which is obtained in the factory it is of good quality or not then the control of operations, process operations, storage operations, handling operations etcetera. Characteristics of the end product required that is final processed product, what is the characteristics needed in that, quality management, storage, transportation, labeling, lot identification and traceability, uh, recall procedures and verification and validation. All these should be properly maintained and should be taken care of by the organization. Then like characteristics of the raw material as I told you that our raw material even some process ingredients or whatever ingredients are to be used in the product manufacturing all right 
even the product contact material, packaging material, etc., shall be described in the document in the SOPs as appropriate. Right? The information include like biological, chemical, and physical characteristics of the materials, composition of formulated ingredients, including additives and processing aids, if any. Origin of the material, for example, whether it is a animal food or plant food, method of production, packaging and delivery methods, storage conditions and shelf life, even preparation and or handling before use or processing, food safety and quality related acceptance, etc. So, all these information regarding the raw material should be properly documented and it should be provided on the level of the raw material. Even raw material should be inspected uh, routinely, laboratory testing is done to evaluate the fitness, stocks are subjected to effective stock rotations, the descriptions are kept up to date, role of the authorities are defined, rejected materials are identified and kept away from the accepted materials, records are maintained properly, then control of operations that is identify any point in the operation which are critical to the safety. Maybe towards the end of this lecture I will take up one example and then I will tell you where GMP is to be and where HACCP is important and then operation should be properly controlled, effective control of the procedure should be there, ensure that effectiveness of the procedure is maintained, even it should be reviewed periodically. Temperature control system should take into account the nature of the food, extended shelf life of the product, method of packaging and uh, processing, even intended use and so on. Similarly, characteristics of the end product. So, all those information which are listed here similar to that of the raw material, similarly that is the end product, that is like what is the type of packaging, labeling, how the, what is the method of distribution, how it should be stored, what are the different biological or chemical and other components is the type, any hazard specification and allergens etc. are relevant for food safety all should be properly provided on the label of uh, on the food. Then product information or labeling because adequate label information on the product enables the next person into the food chain to handle the product safely that is and of course this labeling what are the information should be provided on the food label, it uh, is uh, controlled by regulatory agencies in different countries, but general information like products, what is its composition, what is the serving size, it, it, any statutory or uh, warning instructions or any uh, that uh, if it contains any permitted color, flavor or additive etcetera, all those things information which are given are. Uh, what is the best before date, batch number, lot number that is every if the before consumption if there is any instructions required. So, that should be provided statutory warning. So, all these information should be provided on the label of the product. Then quality management that is an important it is not limited to laboratory operation only, but it include all it is included in all activities related to processing and product quality even independent of the production and has the right to reject the components that is even in fact in most of the factories almost all those factories food processing factories which are uh, in making uh, implementing GMP they should have a quality management team, quality checking team and this quality management and checking and analysis team had the right to change and approve process changes, sampling procedures, specifications for process control and reprocessing of the rejects etcetera. Even finished products should be analyzed, raw material should be analyzed. So, that is the there should be uh, regard laboratory proper laboratories, uh, good laboratory practices should be uh, followed for the analysis and it is so that the quality. Similarly, GMP storage, good manufacturing practices in the storage room, that is the raw material, processing material, packaging material, all those things, they should be stored separately and of course, ideal storage conditions of temperature, relative humidity, air velocity, etcetera should be maintained 
depending upon the type of the material when chemical packaging bag raw material etc they should be stored in and sound pellets storage area must be free from paste or any other contaminants materials and products so stored must be routinely inspected and more important thing, both in the uh, raw material as well as in the finished product first in first out basis should be followed that is FIFO which is normal so, so accordingly the stacking is at of the raw material and uh, finished pro good product should be done in such a way that the material which enters first inside the storage facility it should go out first. Then GMP recall that is the recall information should include the information like uh, amount of the product produced and in inventory and distributed name, size, code or lot number of food recalled, area of distribution, region for the recall and final disposition of the product that is rework, discharge etcetera, how the recalled material was uh, exposed. Then GMP transportation again that is good transportation practices should be followed design and construction of the vehicle clean, it should be clean and are disinfected a separate food facility in the vehicle should be there for food and non food item, it is proper temperature should be maintained verification of the temperature and of course, the vehicle must ensure or during transportation it must be ensured that there is no damage to the product, there is no contamination to the product and the quality of the product is maintained right. It should be properly inspected even both loading and loading restrain transportation of non food item in the same vehicle that is and design and construction of the vehicles that should be proper. So, that to it meets be the requirement and materials used in the vehicle for food transportation should be that is permitted material for uh, uh, those who can be in contact with the food. Then GMP verification very important that is internal audits must be carried out at least every 6 months audits determine so that GMP confirms to the planned arrangements and uh, as per the required standards or not. Audits checks whether GMP is effectively implemented and updated all procedures for auditing like responsibilities, requirements, results and records they are all are defined in a documented process and follow up action based on the results of the audit uh, must be should be taken up and it must be reviewed and properly documented and continual improvement that is very important management should ensure that the effectiveness of the GMP system is continually improved through communication reviews both internal as well as external audit action corrective action etcetera and this should be done all evaluation and updating activities should be based on input from communication external as well as internal communication input from other information concerning the suitability, acceptability and effectiveness of the GMP system, output from the management review or activities all activities are recorded, documented and reported as case may be. Okay. So, now I will just uh, these were the some of the points uh, which were so earlier in that uh, maybe in those slides that is in any industry which is following GMP they should take care of this. Now, I will take uh, you that is like GMP and HACCP what are the critical control points I will with this example I am taking an example of uh, the production of fortified blended food by extrusion and it is basically the raw material is the soya bean and uh, maize that is the soya maize blended uh, fortified food and starting from the finish that is what are the different uh, steps I will tell you that is where CCP is to be adapted and where GMP is to be. So, the raw material intake and loading the raw material comes like maize and uh, this uh, soya beans. So, there is one important factor is that here in fact, uh, CCP must be maintained because this uh, maize all right even uh, 
it is susceptible for uh, growth even in soybean also that is the mycotoxin or uh, the aspergillus molds etcetera they can grow and produce mycotoxin. So, and the moisture content of the grain is an important factor which can uh, encourage the growth of the mold. So, it is an important thing that is the raw material that is both soybean and maize when it comes it must be ensured that it does not have any already grown mold or already toxin that is maximum permissible level in this case is 20 ppb and the moisture content for maize maximum should be 13.5 and soya maximum 11.5. So, this is a critical control point because if the maize uh, moisture is more than 13.5 or soya is more than 11 it will definitely encourage the growth of the mold and mycotoxin control etcetera. So, laboratory samples should be taken immediately laboratory test should be performed for aflatoxin determination for moisture determination. So, this is a critical control point after that in other operations like raw material storage that cleaning weighing even blending with soya in uh, resultant mixer or whatever. So, all in all this uh, good GMP should be followed all right that is even correct weighing procedure, correct blending, correct storage procedure etcetera all this GMP should be ensured. Then in, in uh, grinding of maize and soya then finally, that is after the grinding that is there is a even a, a cooking process after grinding sometime because soya bean it contains some uh, anti nutritional factor right or it is a blended product a student product. So, the may be that is in estrogen cooking etcetera. So, there whatever temperature this must be ensured here it is a CCP critical control point that is the temperature in the extruder it should be minimum that is at uh, 145 degree Celsius or minimum 135 degree Celsius maximum 160. So, it should be in the range of 135 to 160 are optimally at 145 degree Celsius means it must be ensured that the temperature inside the extruder is sufficient enough to remove those trips in inhibitor or uh, biologically active substances which are uh, problematic. So, here it becomes a CCP critical control point. Right. accordingly the, the sample should be taken it should be measured and finally, after the extruder uh, extrusion the blend which is coming a material which is coming it should be analyzed for its urease activity or such other uh, test to make sure to ensure that the trips in inhibitors are completely inactivated. So, that is a CCP then again after that this even cooling of the extruded etcetera it becomes a GMP then grinding of the extruded grinding that is the extruded after extrusion that it may come say in the different shape and sizes sometimes it is a blended floor. So, it has to be grind and converted into powder. So, this becomes again a CCP critical that is the grinding when it is converted into powder it must be ensure that during grinding the moisture it should not absorb moisture all right it should ensure the proper particle size etcetera. So, here the it is a CCP the condition should be properly controlled because otherwise if it uh, absorbs moisture during grinding then uh, from the environment and uh, molds system may contaminate if they contaminate it will grow. So, here it becomes a CCP then finally, uh, your weighing of the cooked maize or soya sugars etcetera this is a G, uh, GMP then blending blending cooked maize soya with vitamins and minerals again here it is a critical control point because the, even vitamins and minerals all right there should not be maximum that is uh, it uh, homogeneous and coefficient of variation 10 percent or even better than that should be because sometimes is uh, by incorrect weighing or by in proper formulation see vitamins minerals premix etcetera if they are added in more there may be some uh, vitamins excessive consumption of vitamins or even excessive consumption of certain minerals may be may uh, provide some undesirable or uh, toxic effects in the long run. So, that should be it becomes a critical control point otherwise then again bagging weighing and stitching 
product storage, dispatch, in all the cases, GMP should be followed. So, this gives similarly in any food processing, starting from the raw material color uh, uh, receiving to the end product till it is product. So, you find out that is in the process value chain, which is the step where there is a chance of the contamination, contamination with a biological agent, contamination with physical agent, uh, which may ultimately lead to the safety hazard etcetera. So, all this th that is the critical control point and for that what is the control measure should be taken, so that that chance of contamination is not there. So, these are then next is that is obviously, this is the record sheet. So, as good documentation practices all these uh, whatever test etcetera in all this CCP, GMP, HP all the steps the proper at least the times whatever the testing done how it uh, what are the results are should be properly recorded. So, it again the step wise uh, there is a, all the steps the proper recording whether it is was GMP whether it was CCP it should be properly recorded. So, I gave you an overview that how good manufacturing practices good hygienic practices should be followed and it becomes a very, very important uh, aspect in any food processing industries. All care needed should be taken to make sure that the product even starting from the material, during processing, during handling, during storage till it reaches to the consumer on the table for the consumption at that point it becomes a responsibility that it should be safe. So, all necessary uh, points at the producer level and whatever necessary guidelines are required by the consumers that should also be provided by the tree and the label etcetera. So, that the food consumed a uh, processed food or this food eaten after eating it does not produce any health hazard this thank you very much.